All right, so this is a real quick hardware update. NVIDIA has announced the 50 series of GPUs. So we're going to talk about, you know, kind of the difference and whether you should upgrade or not and what you should look for when you're upgrading and what other things you need to consider when you're upgrading and whether you really get the absolute power out of it. Like, do you need to build a whole rig? Should you just upgrade your GPU? So we'll just try to answer those questions really quickly. And it's really pretty straightforward for Redshift. Okay, so the 5090 looks amazing. I love the way it looks very clean okay so it's coming out january 30th all right so you can either try to get it like on launch on a website or something but your best bet if you're in a smaller town or whatever kind of like me uh maybe at best buy or something like that you can always try b and h new egg uh the actual nvidia site but on launch day a lot of times you're going to be racing against bots for people doing render farms that are mining for bitcoins and crap like that that kind of uh, ruin it for people like us that actually just want to use the power uh okay so here's the big things you need to know the thing that matters most when it comes to rendering gpu based things for redshift uh and other 3d renders is the CUDA cores, all right? And since we're gonna be using stuff like Unreal Engine, but we're not gonna be making um, games with it because I freaking love games and I don't really wanna turn games, my favorite hobby, into work um, when it comes to games. I don't wanna be playing a game I like and be like working in my head about how they made it uh, while it's going on. So I'm not gonna do that. So we'll talk about Unreal Engine in the cinematic way, okay? Cause cutscenes are the best parts, right? No, not anyway. Um, so yes, CUDA cores are what matter the most. Now the VRAM, which is what comes here, the 32 gig VRAM is huge. That's bigger than anything yet okay and that's very important now when it comes to the power supply you're going to want at least a 1200 watt thing in your computer i think you can get away with a thousand but i'm not even sure like i think you're it recommends 1200 which is fine they're power when it comes to power supplies upgrading that it's pretty straightforward it's literally unplugging one thing plugging in another and price wise they're not very different so definitely look those up what i would recommend i'll link it below pc part picker um, type in the stuff make sure it works with your motherboard and stuff like that now when it comes to motherboards there this is the part that gets tricky when it comes to upgrading because right now like i have a motherboard my computer is old i built it myself um, piece by piece over the years and it was a, originally it had a 1070 in it and it has been upgraded to a 3070 and when I upgraded from the 3070 to the 3090, which is what I have in it now, um, here's what I'll say about that leap. So the 3090 has 10,000 CUDA cores, okay? So that's what you need to keep in mind, which is the same, uh, basically the same amount as a 5080, um, right? The 5080 has 10,700, while the 3090 has 10,400. Now, the difference is with the 5080, you're not going to have uh, 24 gigs of VRAM like you do with the 3090. So before I talk about motherboards and stuff, the main thing you need to keep in mind is basically the rough rule if you're looking to upgrade is you want to take the last two numbers of your graphics card that you have, whether it's a 60, a 70, an 80, or 90, and you want to get the next tier of that or up you don't really want to go backwards like it's not going to be very cost effective for me performance wise to go from a 3090 to a 5080 when it comes to rendering because it's going to render slightly faster but my motherboard is a pc ie 3.0 slot these utilize the 5.0 so basically what that's going to mean is going to bottleneck it now the bottleneck doesn't really affect the performance of rendering as much as it does for gaming so that's kind of the thing like render times will be ever they'll be slightly faster it's a little bit more cuda cores and a little bit faster ddr um but because of the motherboard and stuff for 600 or a thousand dollars to buy a 5080 i'm not going to see that big of a performance boost um, especially with my current motherboard so getting a new motherboard basically means like a wipe uh you know for your whole computer and at this point you're talking you know basically a, a new rig if you get a new cpu new computer new motherboard you're talking a couple thousand dollars for just a slight boost now if i were to get a 5090 which is two thousand dollars 
That is going to be double the coup de corps count and actually more than double the coup de corps count as well as being faster and having more VRAM. So cost effectively, that is a much, much better investment for me to go from a 3090 to a 5090 over a 5080. So you don't want to go backwards. Now, if I had a 3080, I could go to a 5080 and I would see a big jump. That's kind of how it works, right? You, you don't want to go from like a 3080 to a 4070 and to a 5070. You know, it's not, you're not going to really get enough out of the, the money. Unless you're just purely talking about gaming, then it's worth it. But we're talking about rendering and working with this. So that's kind of the rule of it. So the thing is with the 5090, here's my plan what I'm going to do because I don't have a ton of money to do a buy a brand new rig. Um, fingers crossed. I'm going to go to Best Buy the January 30th and try to get my hands on a 5090 physically at the store. You plug it into my existing computer, even though I know my motherboard is going to bottleneck the speed a little bit. And then when I can, I will upgrade my system and build it from there that way. So if I had the money straight up, if I just had, you know, six, seven grand laying around, I would just be like, yeah, buy a pre-built from Puget or something and be like, boom, done. It's water cooled and all this stuff. Like, I don't know. You don't have to do all that. And the, the other thing a lot of people do, I think that this may be this, you know, take with a grain of salt. This is my personal opinion. This, this, you don't have to take, um, an idea from, I don't do like extra fans or water cooling and stuff like that. Um, mainly because I did have a water cooled rig one time and the hose broke and it got on my motherboard and that made it wipe my computer so that i was like that's stupid um but here's the thing that i think about if you're not overclocking you don't have to worry about it these are, cards are designed to perform without extra cooling and stuff like they're built for this way now of course you still need a good rig like a tower with airflow and you want a heat sink and stuff like that but you don't have to have like six led fans water cooling and all this stuff just to get the performance out of your 5090 unless you're going to overclock it which i don't worry about because i don't want to break it and i don't want to mess with it <laughs> so yeah so basically yes if you're going to buy two cards the only cards you're going to want to do is the 5090s now you could just do two 4090s if you can get your hands on those for cheaper probably be fine but you're going to miss out on the gaming end of stuff but you don't want to get two 5070s really or two 5080s um, because they don't bridge like they used to. Um, the 3090 was the last one, um, was the first series that was like, that's the one that bridged before that anything less than that didn't bridge. They used to all be able to stack and then they stopped doing it. So you, if you buy two cards, yes, Redshift will utilize that. Um, but I'm not sure about Unreal Engine and I know gaming and stuff won't, but you will be able to you know separate things out so if you want to render out on one card and do something else with the other card you can if you want to do that but you know whatever the, we're, we're talking about kind of basic builds here when it comes to just simply upgrading should you buy a new graphics card basically what i'm going to say to sum it all up is if you have anything in the 30 series i would seriously consider getting the 50 series version of whatever you have I would not go down with the last two digits. I would go up or maintain. And that's gonna be your most bang for your buck. And you're gonna see the performance and eventually you will probably need to upgrade your motherboard. It depends. You, if you have a PCIe 4 slot, you'll probably be okay and it won't really bother you that much. But if you're like me and you have an older motherboard that's a PCIe 3, um, you will bottleneck it a little bit there, mainly more noticeably on the gaming end of things. Um, but I want to path trace Cyberpunk 2077. Let's be real. Okay. Uh, and GTA 6 is coming out. So that's really what's important. <laughs> but yes. Uh, so yeah, we'll do that. But yeah, um, that's really the things you need to look forward to. Um, bang, bang for your buck. Obviously, if you, you know, if money's no issue, Get 5090s, get two 5090s, build a rig, get a custom rig. That's going to be, get a pre-built. It's going to be the easiest way to get your hands on one, most likely. But obviously that's a clean slate wipe, that kind of thing. You have to reinstall all your stuff and your cards and all that jazz, but up to you. But yeah, that's the things you need to look for. CUDA cores, power supply, and motherboard speed, okay? 
those are the things that are going to really affect it. And um, that's it. I would say basic rule of thumb. Again, last two digits go up in those digits or stay the same and go up in the other two digits. Don't go down in those. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. But we'll definitely look when they release like benchmarks and stuff. We'll look at those and everything. But I just wanted to kind of um, let that go out there because it's a little confusing. Uh, but yeah, January 30th, those are coming out. And uh, people want to know what they should get. And that's kind of the loose rule. Uh, but if you're not too serious about rendering and you just want good gaming, get the 5070. It's going to be great. The 5070 is supposed to be gaming performance as good as the 4090. So, yeah, it's awesome. It's only 600 bucks. So, yeah, 